Well, good morning. It's so good to be with you today. I pray that all is well in your household. I pray that you are healthy and that uh, you, know, you are making the best of a tough situation. If you can't be with us in person, we trust that God has his hand upon you and he will bring us through. Hallelujah. Today, I would like to ask you, if you have your Bibles with you, to open to the book of Matthew chapter 11. Now, I know that Pastor has been in a series uh, in Matthew kind of before the pandemic and and has recently gone back. Um, But you know that Scripture is a wealth of information. And, you know, what, what may come out in some sermons may be, you know, seen a little different. And this is just a portion of Scripture that I feel strongly about today, not trying to tag along to pastor series at all, um, but great portion of Scripture. Matthew 11, verses 28 and 30. It says this, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Today I'd like to talk to you about the invitation of Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your your openness to us, Lord God, your extended hand to us, God. Lord, you've offered this to us today, and Lord, I pray that your word would come alive, that we would be reminded, God, uh, of all that you've done for us, Lord, and and that we would be thankful and blessed. Bless your word now, I pray, in Jesus' name, amen. Now, I am aware that most of you probably watching this are saved, you've accepted Christ into your life. And maybe you think of these verses as sinners coming to Jesus. And it is for that, absolutely. But it is for believers as well. And as we look at this portion of Scripture, the believers at the time, uh, this is who he was speaking to. You know, the Pharisees were, um, were there, as you know, to interpret the law. And they did that diligently. And not only were they there to interpret the law, but they were there to strictly enforce it. And a Pharisee is, while described as self-righteous and a hypocrite, I've even read recently that the term Pharisee is considered anti-Semitic. Although they were described as that, self-righteous and hypocrites. The word actually comes from a Hebrew word called perush, and that simply means separated. So the Pharisees were separated for a life of purity. They were separated from uh, things of this world in order to strictly follow the law. But along with that, it also became separation from those who interpreted the law differently than they did. It separated them from common people. It separated them from Jews and Gentiles who uh, were embracing Greek philosophy or Hellenistic culture. It separated them from certain political groups. The Pharisees avoided these groups in order, in, in their determination to, uh, to separate themselves from any type of impurity as they strictly followed the law of Moses. And the burden that was put on the people, believers, that was put on them was a command of do's and don'ts. And we, we've seen that even in modern day. But I want to point out the stark contrast between their approach and Jesus' approach. Where the Pharisees were pressuring them to follow the law, Jesus was more interested in showing them God's love. 
and where the Pharisees avoided and scorned sinners and separated themselves from them, Jesus sought them out. Jesus sought you out. Do you know that? While we may not have anything to have offered, he sought us out because of his great love for us. Obviously, this approach that Jesus took should be ours as well. To not be in communication with sinners, or it, it's impossible in this day. We're all sinners, obviously. But those who have not come to Christ, uh, rather than shy away, we need to be intentional about reaching them. And I think everybody would say amen to that. Rather than avoid them, we seek them out. But in this invitation of Jesus that we read in Matthew 11, I want to point out three commands that are found in there and, and, and maybe break them down a little bit and, and give us a little bit more understanding if I, if I can do that. So firstly, Jesus says in verse 28, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. You know, I think as a, as a parent, uh, you know, if, if you're a parent and you have children, or, uh, I just think anybody, when, when my son or my daughters, when they were little, and they would come to me crying, whether they got hurt, whether they were upset, as a father, I didn't need to know the reason, but it was all I could do to just say, come here, come to me, and wrap my arms around them and comfort them. And that is a beautiful symbol of what Christ is saying to each one of us today. Come to me. Who would deny this child comfort in their time of need? Now, you may be, you've may have been the type of father that said, uh, go see your mother. But aren't you glad today that Jesus does not ever pawn us off on another? His invitation is, come to me in our time of need. Hallelujah. In the message translation of the Bible, I go to it often just because a different context sometimes and, and gives you a different perspective. This exact verse says, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Now that almost sounds like a, a modern day accident lawyer commercial, you know, where they say, have you been injured in a, you know, this whole thing that they say. This is Jesus saying, are you worn out? Are you tired? Burned out on trying to do the do's and the don'ts? Come to me if you're weary and burdened. And these believers in this day, Jews and Gentiles, were beat down by the uh, demands that Pharisees were putting on them. And I want to ask you today, what might that look like for you today? Have you ever tried to live up to somebody else's expectations? It can be draining. You, you want to please, obviously. You want to honor. Maybe it's a parent. Maybe it's a, a husband or a wife. You want to live up to expectations, but it can be very difficult. But in your life, what weight might you be carrying today that has got you beat down and tired? Might one of these describe you? And these are all rhetorical, but think about them. Might you be broken today? Might, might you be wounded, maybe from an older situation that has never been addressed? Might you find yourself desperate, and empty, and guilty today? Maybe you're drained, or maybe just life in general has got you beat down. Look at the last, what is it, seven, eight months? We've all got, if anybody had a reason to be beat down, it is the world currently, uh, but even in our own local situations of the do's and don'ts, wear the mask, you know, all of these things, it can be draining. And I, they say that uh, depression is on the rise and all of these things. I want to tell you today that no matter what the situation, we have an open invitation from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to come to him. Hallelujah. 
Now, I want to tell you that to come to him means to trust him wholeheartedly. To come to him means to trust him. To come to him means you're giving him control. And our pride sometimes won't allow us to give up our control. But I want to tell you that doing it on our own has gotten us to this point, And now we are desperate and we need to go to Jesus. Now you may say to yourself, you know what? I'm, I'm good. I, I, don't, I don't feel burdened. I'm not wounded. I don't feel guilty. And this invitation of Jesus has no appeal to you today. I want to tell you, we all carry a great burden, and that is our sin, all of us. And just like those that were exhausted under the weight of the law and the demands put on them, the weight of our sin can be exhausting, and soon we will crumble. And whether we acknowledge it or not, you may say, I, I'm not a sinner. Scripture says differently. In Romans 3, 21 through 24, it says this, but now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile. Now, here it is. Verse 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. We have no excuse. We are all sinners. And when we come to Christ, we need somebody to take the weight of that sin off us. Christ says, come to me. Trust me. You can be assured today you can trust Jesus. You know, in contrast to some of the things I asked you before, these are in contrast. When we come and we say, yes, I, I am broken Jesus mends that brokenness. When we come and we say, I'm wounded, Jesus heals our wounds. When you're desperate, he rescues you. When you're empty, he fills you. Do you know that crying child I was talking about just a little while ago? Do you know why they come to you? It's because they've experienced and are familiar with the comfort that you have shown them in the past. A little child knows enough to go to you because they know that your arms will be open wide to comfort them. They also don't know anybody else that shows them that kind of love. And so once again, they return to you. That's, you know, at, at one point in our lives, maybe, maybe we've been Christians for years, but think back to when you used to approach Jesus that way. And we, for some reason over time, we become so proud. Where did we lose that childlike faith where we knew where we needed to run in times of trial or desperation? It is Jesus, and he invites us to come to him. Hallelujah. Not only in these verses are his invitation to come to him, but the second command he gives us in verse 29 says, take my yoke upon you. Now, if you're familiar, I'm not a farmer by any means. If you're familiar with a yoke, it was used for oxen. And where the strength of one ox wasn't enough to pull a wagon, they had this piece of equipment that could be very, uh, just cut out of a piece of wood that harnessed the two ox together. And with that power, now they could pull the weight. And where one alone didn't have enough power, put two together, and they even do three, or they do it in, in, in pairs, two or four or six even sometimes, to add this strength to pull this weight. When Jesus is saying, take my yoke upon you, he's saying, come alongside me where your power was inadequate. My power alone is inadequate. I want to tell you, when we yoke ourselves with Jesus, it's not an even 
It's not an even pull. Jesus is carrying the full weight, and he is more than happy to do it. He is faithful to do it. Can you imagine if you would allow yourself to be yoked to Jesus Christ, what could be accomplished for you in your life and for his kingdom? What could you do if you were yoked together with Jesus? Just think of the challenges that you face that you've tried to do on your own. And look where it's gotten you. Imagine if you would take his yoke upon you and Jesus is saying, let me carry the load. Come together with me. When we submit to Jesus, we are yoked together with him. Hallelujah. You know, it's said that uh, oxen, when they are first, you know, this is very an unnatural thing for them to have this, this uh, yoke put upon them. And I can imagine for us too, you know, it, there's a little bit of resistance in the beginning. And it is said that to train them takes time and patience. And I would say that about ourselves too. Certainly me. I'd be the first to say that. But you know, it says that after a while, oxen, why they even choose oxen in the first place is they begin to respond to voice commands whether it's forward or backwards, right or left, they begin to respond, and, and now the, uh, the farmer doesn't have to handle them and, and guide them. It's just through his voice. And he commands them, and they listen, and they learn, and they hear his voice, and they do. What a beautiful picture of us. If we are yoked with Christ, we begin to learn to hear his voice, and hear his commands, and we do as he sees fit, as he leads us. So I want you to picture this. You know, the creator of the universe. I, I am one, I have a deck, and at night there's not a lot of ambient light in my backyard, and I can look up and see stars uncountable. And I'm always amazed that God has created this wonderful universe. But the same God that has done all of that and in awe of, and certainly we should be in awe of all that God has done. This same creator invites us to come to him and lay our burdens down and allow him to take the weight of our brokenness and our burden and put it upon him. Hallelujah. He tells us to join together with him so he can take the weight. And he will lead and guide you. He goes on to say, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Do you know the burden of Christ is attributed to his commandment that is most characterized with his teaching. And that is that we should love one another. And when we begin to do that, we find that all of, all of the draw that comes from that, from loving one another, that that becomes light and easy. That loving one another is not a heavy burden. Christ has done all the heavy lifting and enabled us and given us the opportunity to show love as he has shown us love. As we trust him and we submit to him and our wills, we lay them down and we say, Lord, have your way. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. Hallelujah. Thirdly, this morning, his command is to come to him, to take our, his yoke upon us. And he says, learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. Learn from me. Again, as a, as a parent, whether you know it or not, you're teaching your kids just by your actions, just by your everyday living, they're watching you and they want to be like you and they want to imitate you. And that's a pretty scary thought at times. Think of yourself. Would you want, every, would you want a child to imitate everything you do? Uh, but that's, that's the job we've been given as parents and we take that seriously. And so when we look at Jesus, you know, he, he is saying, learn from me, watch me, imitate me, and he will show you. 
You know, when I think of my children, there are things that I need to be intentional. Yes, they're going to learn just by watching me and imitating me, but I want to be intentional about teaching them things that they'll use through the course of their life. You know, whether it's, it's Lynn teaching the girls how to cook something, something simple. It, these are things that they'll carry on with you. I think back to what my father showed me. And so my every intention is to say, learn from me. And so this past summer, my son, uh, I think more than anything, just wanted to drive the tractor, the lawnmower. Uh, but he showed an interest, and praise God, you know, I, if I can get out of cutting grass, I, I'm okay with that. And his interest was more or less driving. He, he wanted to drive the lawnmower through the neighborhood if he could. So my intention was to say, learn from me. And so I would sit back and I would watch him, and then I, I would call him over to me, turn the lawnmower off, explain to him what I saw and what you could do, um, and then at some point you just let him go. Now, I am certainly not gentle and humble at heart at times. It can be frustrating when you're trying to teach somebody something. That's why I, I, don't, I don't consider myself a great teacher. Uh, people ask me, do you teach guitar lessons? No, because I don't know how to explain what I do, and I just don't have the patience. I, that's me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just don't have the patience. So when my son gets out there and cuts the grass, and I'm looking, and the rows are veering off to the to the left, to the right, and he's not getting around the trees, and he's not getting around the edge of the property. You know, I'm not always humble at heart. I'm not always gentle. I'm yelling at him, waving him over. And how can you fault somebody for wanting to try? You know, and he's getting better. All the time he's getting better. Actually, my middle daughter has stepped up and cut grass. I come home when, on a day where I know it's time to do it, and it's done. What a beautiful uh, sentiment to a father that it's done that way. But sometimes when we're trying to teach, we can't always be inconsiderate to say, you haven't done it the way I showed you. I mean, that is the process of, of teaching and, and learning. But aren't you glad today that Jesus is gentle and humble at heart, that he has the patience to deal with somebody like me, where our pride can really, really step up at that point. And we don't want to relinquish so much control. Coming to Jesus means to trust him. I remember when my kids were young, and I would put them up on the kitchen counter, and I would say, jump to me. And man, that took a lot of courage on their part, a whole lot of trust. And, and at first, they wouldn't do it. And then finally, that one initial time where they leaped and jumped into my arms. Oh, they thought it was great. Now they wanted to do it continually, almost to the point where it was scary. If you put them up there, you better be looking because they're coming. Uh, and I, I learned a little trick, too, that I would look away at the last moment, knowing I was going to catch them. But they would stutter and still fall, but I would be there to catch them. It takes a whole lot of trust. We need to trust Jesus today. You know, the first two commands that we, that we talked about they represent crisis on our, on our part. We come to Jesus because we have no one else to go to. His invitation is, come to me if you're weary and heavy burdened. And so we go to him and we take his yoke upon, him, on, upon us. But as we learn from him, that's the process. The other two are crisis. This is the process of coming to him is to learn his ways. We find deeper peace because we trust him more. And life in general is simplified and unified when it's surrounded with Jesus Christ in our life. The beauty of these verses is, if we'll accept the invitation that he has put forth, if we'll come to him, if we'll take from him, if we'll learn from him, there's a promise his promise is, I will give you rest. He goes on to say, you will find rest for your souls. I remember, you know, I've been in ministry now for uh, probably 22 years, 23 years, uh, you know, kind of full time, if you will. But before that, I had other jobs. I, 
I worked at uh, the Chrysler plant when it was open for a short time. I worked for a house contractor where I did the menial jobs. I cleaned up job sites. I picked up wood. Um, I, I worked with this diamond wire that cut concrete. And I know that sounds, you know, high and lofty. It wasn't. It was dirty and getting up early and all of these things. And, and I have such a, a huge admiration for physical laborers because somebody's got to do it. And man, there are some dirty jobs. There's a show about that. Dirty jobs. Somebody's got to do it and they do it. But something I realized is no matter how tired I was from a day of work, and there were times where you came home and you just, you didn't want to do anything. You just wanted to hit the bed and, and go to bed, start over. But many times I would wake up that next day and I would feel refreshed as it should be. You, you sleep a night and you feel good the next day. Some stuff would linger, you know, your shoulder hurting from carrying something. But within a few days, you know, that would go away. But something I realized when I started in ministry was it was a different kind of rest that I was looking for, where it was not so much physical anymore. And as a child, you know, growing up in a pastor's home, I didn't always realize that. And Sunday afternoon came, and man, as a kid, I just wanted to go do something or play or go somewhere, and my parents would sleep. And I never understood that. How can you sleep? It's a beautiful day. Let's go. Let's, let's do something. And I can tell you after 20 plus years in ministry, I can appreciate a good Sunday afternoon nap. I, many of you, I believe, will say amen to that. You know, there's something about ministry that you just can't sleep it off. I find that carrying the burden of other believers of sharing in their worry and in their time of need, that weighs on me. And although I can sleep, I wake up, and that heaviness is still there. I want to carry that with you. I want to be there with you through it. And when we come to Jesus today, the rest he provides is not just a physical rest. That's not what he's talking about. When we come to Christ by faith, he gives us rest. When we take his yoke upon us and we learn, we find rest. This is a deeper rest of surrender and obedience. It's not worry-free, but we can be that way in Christ. We can be worry-free if we'll trust him and allow him to lead. But the first rest that we read about is peace with God. When Jesus says, come to me, now this is as a new believer as well. Jesus says, come to me. We have peace with God. Romans 5.1 says this, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Every believer who came to Jesus and accepted them as their Savior were made right with God. We were at peace with God. Because before that, and if you have not accepted Christ today, you are at odds with God. And Jesus' sacrifice is what justified us before God and gave us peace with God before we were not at peace with God. Today, I want to encourage you that if you are not at peace with God, to find Jesus, come to him and know him today. But the second rest that we see in learning about him, learning from him, is called the peace of God. Philippians 4 Verses 4 through 9 says this, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, 
whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the peace of God will be with you. If you will learn, if you will imitate what you see in Jesus, the peace of God will be with you. I want to be there. I want you to be in that place as well. In closing today, I don't know about you, but I need the rest that only Jesus can provide. I'm not a proud man. I know when I'm in need. There's an old song we sing, I need thee every hour, every hour. But the truth is, Jesus is not going to force himself upon you. He's made every possible way and every avenue that you can take. His invitation is, come to me. But it's ultimately up to you. He doesn't simply open these verses that we talk about in Matthew by just saying, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy. It preceded by that is, will you come to me and trust me and take my yoke upon you? Yes, all of these other things will be added unto you, but you have to take the first step. Let me ask you today, if you haven't before, what do you have to lose by not accepting the invitation of come to me that Jesus is offering? Where has doing it on your own gotten you? And are you happy with the results of, of where you're at today? I think timely, even, even believers, timely for this day and age that we're living in, we're worn out and we're wounded and we're hurt and we're broken. And the weight of our sin is, is heavy. So who else, if you've not come to Christ, is going to lift that burden from you? Who else? Who, who can you go to? Aren't you tired of, of looking in other areas and nothing's working out? Wouldn't you love to just find rest? And Jesus is the only one that is going to give you that rest if you're willing to trust him to come to him today and trust him? Are you willing to give him that opportunity to provide rest from your weariness and your burdens? Are you willing to take and learn from him today? Understand this. In a moment, I want to pray. And I do want to pray a salvation prayer. But understand that these verses are for all of us. I want to close with reading our opening verses again. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Father, I pray today, Lord, if there is anyone within the sound of my voice watching today or a future that has never given you the opportunity. They've never acknowledged Jesus as their Savior. God, I pray today they would say, Lord, I am a sinner. I am in need of salvation. I want to be at peace with God. Lord, I pray that they would pray that prayer, that they are a sinner and they are in need of saving. And Jesus is the only one that can do that. Lord, for those of us that are our believers, and we've read this scripture time and time again. Lord, I pray today, Lord, that you would bind up the brokenhearted, as your word says. Lord, that you would heal deep wounds, Lord, that we face, that we carry every day. Lord, that we, you would fill the emptiness that we feel. Lord, that you would remove the guilt of our sin. If, if we'll confess it to you, Lord God, you never remember it against us. Lord, we need to let it go. And lay it all down at your feet, God. Lord, allow us the opportunity. You, you, you've set the table. You've set the, the avenue for us to take. And that is to come to you and trust you. And Lord, I am praying today that you would speak to hearts. 
Lord God, and that they would be sensitive to you today. Lord, they've given every other avenue, they've given every other possibility a chance. Lord, why not you today? I pray that they ask themselves that. Why have I not given Jesus a chance? And Lord, thank you that your promise is, if we'll do that, you'll give us rest. Lord, be with us today. Lord, walk with us daily. We need you every hour. Lord, be blessed today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to say if you pray the prayer of salvation and you say that you're a sinner in need of saving, today you are a child of God. You are born, you are written down in the Lamb's book of life, and you are at peace with God. And I want to say hallelujah. And if that is you, leave a comment, I pray. Leave a comment. But today, know that you can find rest for your soul in Jesus Christ. God bless you today. It will be good to see you in the near future, I pray. Hallelujah.